Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. And you know this light is like super weird. I usually never ever film in the mornings. Um, but anyways, the sun is literally in my face and you see this like line. <laughs> see this line over here but anyways this video is the one that I promised in my last video that I would make um, to basically kind of teach you how to how to copy other people's teams that you see in their videos I think a big problem that you know some people that are struggling may have is they don't know exactly know the the actual roles of the various units in the game and even like the the subclasses you know how there's like um, like vanguards, guards, and stuff. There's like different types of vanguards, different types of guards as well. So it gets really, really confusing. And for for some people, um, they don't really know which ones are are interchangeable. And after af basically after you watch this video, you'll be able to pretty much look at anybody's video and just copy their teams. Um, unless they're using very special units, very specific units that can only like do a very specific task. You know, that's that's kind of those are like real exceptions. But for the most part, you will be able to copy other people's teams, even if they're using five star, six star units on their teams. So this video that you see over here, <clears throat> man, I almost just choked on my own saliva as I inhaled. Um, this this account you see over here is my free-to-play account um, and kind of to, just to show you what this account has done it has cleared through all of well if you watch the last video you'll know that it has already cleared through all of the event um, including the challenge modes and it has also cleared all of um, all of the challenge mode in story as well cleared every single stage in challenge mode in story as well I did this actually quite a while ago I think I did this like last week um, when my units were a, a lot lower level and the only elite two I had was um, Shirayuki but this account I only use um, I actually like seriously play on this account which is why I'm raising stuff to E2 and like leveling everything up it's not like a it's not one of those where accounts where people just make an account and just use that to make videos. Um, this is an account that I actually play on and I kind of gave myself the challenge of only using four star units on this account. Um, I used a few three star units to to kind of get started because I was missing, I had to pull some of these units from from um, from the gacha and it, it did take a little while but four star units are very very easy to get like pretty much anyone that has played the game after a while will have like every single one of the four stars they're not they're not very rare you can get them from recruits you can get them pretty much anywhere and you see a lot of them already like max potential as well so it's not very difficult to um to get four star units and um kind of the reason why i decided to raise four star units like why specifically on this account i decide, decided to use four star units is because four star units have a little bit more longevity actually not a little bit but quite a lot more longevity than than three star units um in in terms of like just overall strength like three stars and four star units they don't differ too much and some three stars even have better stats and better skills than four star than their four star counterpart um for for like a, for one of their roles and the reason why i don't um use three star units and for like most of the you know most of the general player base why I don't think it's that good of an idea to be like using a full team of three stars is because although they're very cheap to raise, they have no future essentially. Um, once a three star unit is maxed out, like once a, uh, one, of the, one of your three star units are completely maxed out, there's no way to make them any stronger. And basically they eventually at some point, they will get left behind for, for your stronger units. Um, which is why in terms of like, you know, resource efficiency, it's actually not that good of an idea to be using um, a lot of these three star units. However, you do want to raise whatever you're missing. So if you're missing certain roles, for example, you don't have a, a you know, one of your, 
you're missing a sniper or something, for example, you can still raise the, these three star units to fill that role because you need that role in order to progress through the game, right? You need you need a unit of that role to be able to progress through the game, which is the you know the the whole reason they gave us basically a three star counterpart of every single role in the game. So to what exactly are are the roles? Um, we're going to be going through the eight classes, kind of very briefly, and also talking about the, the kind of their subcategories, or you know, as I would like to call it, their the, the, their specific roles. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is vanguards. And vanguards, there's two types of vanguards. The first type is your your two block vanguards. It's very easy to tell vanguards apart by their block count which is why I kind of um, you know, define one as two block and, and the other as one block. Um, it literally just says blocks two enemies on traits over here, which is why I call them two block vanguards. And two block vanguards, what they do is they can generate deploy points for your team. So if you think about this in terms of chess, they're kind of like the pawns. You kind of use them in the beginning to kind of help set you up so you can use your other pieces on the board, right? Um, in this case, to use your other units, your other units that cost more than more than vanguards, and vanguards typically typically have very very low cost, as you can see over here. So the way that two two guard vanguards are used um, is basically to help help you set up, and the way that one block vanguards, the the other type of vanguards that you can see, um, an example is Vigna and Plume. There's currently three in the game granny as well as also one block vanguard is they're typically used in emergency situations where you need to um where the level requires you like there's so much pressure early on and in a few challenge world stages it's like this as well where the pressure is so so high early on that you don't have enough deploy points to put down like a really strong unit but you still need something to hold the line that's when you use your one block vanguard because um, you can see over here the trait of a one block vanguard is after they kill, uh, after they make a kill, they basically generate one DP and they also refund the the cost, the, the DP cost when you retreat them. So what you can do is you can put Vigna down for, for nine deploy points. You can see over here, that's how much she costs. Um, it costs nine to put Vigna down and then she can um, kill like one or two enemies and then after that, you would basically gain two deploy points. And at the same time, while she's fighting, your deploy points would also be regenerating at the same time. So then when you have enough, you can retreat her and put down a stronger unit, basically. So that's one of the um, one of the ways you can use the one block vanguard. Obviously, um, one block vanguards have very, I think, pretty decent stats, um, especially their attack stat is usually relatively high, which is why you can also use them as kind of like a single... Um, DPS unit as well uh, when 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 you retreat them and then like later on in the stage if you need another DPS you can kind of put them down again in the future to do that so that kind of covers vanguards there it, vanguards are pretty simple there's only two types we're gonna move on to snipers so for snipers there's actually four types of snipers I actually created a, I actually used the tier list maker to make a um, category list of every single category. And I also will have that in the description below. Um, I think I'll just ex export it into a single image and I'll include it in the description below. Um, and basically that will be able to help you tell, tell all the different types apart. Um, but for snipers, there's four types and we're mainly going to be concerned about two types because the other two types, um, there's only one of each in the game currently, and they're both five star units. So it's not everybody's gonna have them, and you actually don't need them to progress through the game. As you can see on this account, I don't have them, I didn't use them. So they're not necessary for the game at this moment. Um, but there are gonna be more like additions in the future. So I, I didn't categorize them as like other um, there's actually more like short range snipers, more long range snipers in the future. So they're kind of a category on their own, but we're not going to talk too much about them. The two categories we're going to talk about is first the single target snipers and the AOE snipers. So for single target snipers, the, the, um, their trait you'll see over here is that they attack aerial enemies first. So you can use them to kill the drones that fly by. And the other, um, 
thing about single target snipers is their cost is typically a lot lower than AoE snipers. You can see Jessica costs 11 over here. And if you take a look at Shira Yuki, um, she costs 26 at E2, even with like one um, plus one potential. So, so she costs 27 at base, which is quite expensive. You know, it's, it's not easy to set down an AoE sniper in the beginning because of their high cost. And the, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the way you use single target snipers is obviously you can use them to kill drones. You can use them early on to help you basically be your, like your main DPS because single target snipers, they do a lot of damage to low armored enemies, which means that um, early on, usually on, in a stage early on, the enemies that start walking by, um, the way that they designed this game are usually low armored enemies which means that you basically once you have your vanguard set down you can put down a sniper and then afterwards a healer and then you'll basically be able to stabilize and then afterwards you can start putting down your you know your big guns your aoe snipers um swap your swap out your vanguards for tanks and then you'll be kind of set for the entire stage um so basically because of their low cost they're used also pretty early on as well in the le level. I think 90% of the time when I start a stage and I, I kind of start setting up, it usually starts with Vanguard and Single Target Sniper. Like 90% of the time, um, it, it kind of works like that. Which I'll talk a little bit more about like raising units, um, the order of raising units um, later on as well. You'll have to remind me. But how can you remind me when this is a video? So... The, the um, I think that's pretty much it for snipers. Um, single targets basically like early on, and then later on when when the level has like a lot of enemies flooding in, you can set down an AOE sniper to take care of them, and that's basically the the two types of the main two types of snipers. The medics there's also two types. Um, there's single target and there's AOE. It's very, very straightforward. Um, single targets, it'll just say they restore the HP of allies. And for AOE, when you click them, it says they will, wait, this is not an AOE. This one's an AOE. It'll say they can heal three allies simultaneously. So their difference is pretty simple. Like single target ones, they heal more, but they can only heal one, one unit, um, one ally at once. And AoE can heal three at once, but they heal for less. So that's basically it. That's that's literally it. Um, you know, healers are pretty straightforward. When you need healing, you have to put them down to heal up your units. There's really not too much to talk about healing. And for casters, um, there's two main types of casters. There's actually there's only two types of casters right now. Um, there's only single target and, and AoE. So single target is like Amiya, Hayes, Ayafala, um, Stewart, Durin. I think these are all of them currently in the game right now. And AoEs are like Gitano, Lava, um, you know, 12 F, Skyfire, and um, I think Ifrit. Ifrit is, I would I actually categorize as other because she's not interchangeable with a lot of other AoE because of her attack range. So she's kind of like a special case. And I would actually not categorize her, her as like interchangeable with other um, AOE, AOE um, mages or casters, whatever you want to call them. So the the main way you can tell them apart is it'll say um, single target ones will say they deal arse damage, and AOE ones will say they deal AOE arse damage, basically. And the main purpose of using um, using a caster is later on on the, in most stages, um, most of the time there's going to be like heavily armored units, and you can't do too much damage to them with your snipers. And because that's kind of where when your casters come in, and because casters they do arse damage, and arse damage ignores armor. Um, basically, arse is like magic damage in this game. It ignores armor, therefore they can deal with those high armored units much, much easier. Um, they typically cost a little bit more than, than snipers. So you set them down, usually set them down a little bit later, unless the stage requires you to set down a caster really quickly. Um, it's very, very situational, but most of the time they're used to deal with very heavily armored units. 
and they can basically serve the role as a sniper as well um, if you have enough cost and aoe casters they kind of they can do the same thing as um, single target casters but they don't do as much single target damage because their attack speed is usually a lot slower as you can see over here um are we not here over here um Gitano attacks quite slow and they also cost a lot more you can see she costs 31 which is very very expensive so um the main way you use aoe casters is basically when there's a lot of units flooding in because they do aoe damage um, they can help clear a lot of units at once we've seen this in the you know in the current um, challenge mode granny event um, if you haven't seen that you can see my last video of like the last stage where there's a whole bunch of enemies flooding in and I actually use two AoE casters to kind of clear clear them out because there's just way too many enemies for like single target um, damage dealers to kind of kill them one by one and when they're grouped up together you know she does a whole bunch of damage to 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 those enemies which is why they're very very crucial you definitely want to raise one for your team and basically what I raise is one of each and some three star counterparts you can raise on the side as well. Um, I mainly use use um, lava for one of the supply stage farming. That's the only reason I, I kind of raised her. Um, so for clearing story, you really only need one of each. You don't need two of each as, as I have here. So that's pre pretty much it for casters. Now, guards is where it's really, really confusing. Um, guards, there are, I would say there's four main types. Although in the future, you could actually say there's five when more guards are released. But for now, there's four main types. Okay, currently in the game. There, there, there will be five, like, cause there'll be like another type called like, like non-ranged two block guards, essentially. But there's no non-ranged two block guards um in the game right now until until chen comes out until chen comes out so for for guards the first type of guards is a one block guard so one block guard is some something like melantha like scotty um franca these are one block guards you can see over here they only block one and the advantage of a one block guard is they cost less than a two block guard as you can see she costs only 13 and um, the other thing is that their redeploy time is typically shorter than a two block guard, which means that you can kind of use Melantha kind of like as an assassin. You can send her out, take out a single enemy, and then retreat her and still be able to use her in the future. Um, the other thing about, about one block guards is they have very, very good stats. Um, this is true for Melantha, this is true for Franco, this is true for Scotty as well. They have high HP and also high attack, um, which is mainly used to basically duel people. Like, they make very, very good duelists. You know, they can take on a lot of units that, are, that come out. They can take them on one-on-one. On one. In some cases, like Melantha plus a healer can solo a boss. Um, in some cases, Scotty by herself can solo a boss, you know, so... There's there's a lot of um, uses for 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 one blockers. They're very very strong in like one v one situations. Um, the other use of a one block guard is obviously you can also use them as a melee DPS because of their high attack stat. In stages where it allows you to basically um, put another melee unit on the side to like attack the same block, you can kind of use a a one block guard to do that. The second type of guard is a two, range 2 block guard. So range 2 block guard is Frostleaf, Silver Ash, um, Midnight, um, Lapland. These are all range 2 block guards. You can tell that they're a range 2 block guard by clicking on them and seeing their, their attack range. They can basically hit units that are nearby them and also in front of them as well, up to 3 blocks away. And you can see over here that they also block 2. And range two block guards, they will cost um, typically more than a one block guard. And in terms of stats, like raw stats, it won't be as good as a one block guard. But the, their advantage is that um, they can actually hit aerial units. So they can hit like the drones that are flying in the sky. And you can also set them behind your melee units to serve as an additional DPS, 
which is very very useful in a lot of stages i i use frost leaf so much because of her range and you can see um you might have seen in my last video where i was clearing the second challenge mode of the event stage where i set frost leaf um, behind the front line to kind of serve as an additional dps because there's a lot of stages in the game where there's only a limited amount of range tiles that your units can stand on and by using a melee unit to serve as a as a ranged dps unit um, you basically save yourself one of those tiles and you can use one of those tiles as for one of your snipers casters or healers instead which is why um, there's a lot of advantages to raising a ranged a ranged two block guard so that's like frost leaf lapland um, Silver Ash, Midnight as well. Midnight's also very, very good. Doberman, I actually would not classify her as a ranged two block guard. Although you could say her, say she is, but her range really isn't as good. Like it only attacks two blocks in front, and I think it also does not increase as well. So in that case, I kind of probably would actually categorize her as a normal two block guard instead of a ranged two block guard. The other, um, the third type of guard is an AoE guard. So an AoE guard is like Spectre, Savage, um, Estelle is also an AoE guard. And AoE guards, they basically what they do is they do AoE damage. Um, they can hit multiple units at once. So they can hit all blocked enemies. So when Spectre is blocking two enemies, she can hit two at once. Um, when you get her to E2 and she can block three enemies, then she can hit three at once. So Spectre, um, or... Not, not just Spectre, but AoE guards in general, um, they're really at the current state of the game, like all with all the current content out right now, there really is no need to be raising an AoE guard. Uh, you can kind of use them as a pseudo tank sometimes, and if you get like Spectre's level high enough, you can basically just use her as a tank. I see some like, um, mostly whales <laughs> use use her as a tank like they get her to like e2 very high level and just kind of use her as a tank because she can block three so it's like you know what does it matter anyways um but in terms of like the average player um me recommending doing that like i would not actually recommend doing that and kind of my recommendation is there you can hold on to them but you know if if they're your waifus you can definitely raise them but for current content right now, there really is no um, no real practical use for them right now in terms of just clearing the stages, clearing challenge mode and stuff like that. Um, there's better units you can put your resources into if you're serious about like clearing the content right now or being like as efficient as possible. But you know, if you're not as try hard as me, then it's it's perfectly fine. I'm pretty try hard on this account because it's like completely F2P, like 100% free to play. There's like, um, and I also only use four stars. So like, I'm really, really serious about my resource management on this account. Um, so, which is why you see me not raising any, um, any AOE guard. So the fourth type of guard is actually, no, there's six types of guards. I was wrong. I, I, I counted wrong. There's actually six types of guards. Um, the fourth type of guard is um, is arch damage dealing single tar or one block guards. So that's Moose and um, only Moose right now. Oh, the only one that's in the game right now is Moose. So basically, the uh, you'll see you can tell them apart by looking at traits, and it says deals arch damage. Um, and the way you want to use them is basically to. Like, it's very, very situational. You really don't need to be raising... Well, you could... It's it's kind of hard to say, because, like, some people use, like, um, moves to do, like, the event stage against, like, you know, Big Bob. But it's not necessary. In terms of, like, it being necessary, she is not necessary for clearing all the content in the game. Like, you know, if, if I haven't raised them on this account then you can pretty much safely assume that it's not necessary to, to like if i mean this is this is just logic right <laughs> i cleared everything on this account i um use only four stars if i have not raised something it means that i did not need to use that unit because it's level one i didn't use it <laughs> to clear whatever i cleared um therefore 
you know, it's not 100% necessary, right? It just, you know, if you just go go by that reasoning, essentially. Um, but in terms of it being good to have, I think it's still pretty nice. You can ha you can definitely have a guard that deals like R damage. Um, the the kind of the advantages they have is that they like the real thing that they have going for them is that they deal R damage. Um, but the the you can't really use them like you can't be like I'm gonna raise Moose but not raise another one block guard and just use Moose as my one block guard because Moose doesn't have a lot of the advantages of a one block guard. First of all, she doesn't have the crazy stats of, of a lot of the other one block guards. Um, second of all, she doesn't have the very fast redeploy time. And third of all, her cost is also much higher than the other one block guards, um, which kind of makes things a little bit complicated, right? <laughs> complicated. So the fifth type of guard is a fast attacking one block guard. So you can see um, Bee Hunter is an example of this. Uh, there's only two in the game right now, only Bee Hunter and Indra in the game right now. And the, they um, basically, they, their advantage is that they have very, very low cost, meaning that you can use them to um, do damage early on in, in a level. I think in certain cases um, where you don't need to refund the one the the one block vanguard, you can also use them in place of a one block vanguard. In in those cases, um, and they usually have very low attack, but they attack very fast. The problem with this is well, the the thing about this is you can it doesn't matter when you're attacking low armored units because you're basically still dealing the same damage if you're attacking very fast. But because the way armor works in this game is additive, it means that when they're attacking high armored units, they they deal like barely any damage, which is the weakness of a, um, a fast attacking one block guard. Do you need one to do anything in the game? The answer is no, as I obviously have not raised Bee Hunter, but... Um, they, they, they have their uses, they do have their uses. Uh, and Bee Hunter is like a lot of people's favorites, so you know, if, she, if she's your waifu, definitely uh, definitely waifu before gameplay, right? Unless you're a tryhard like me. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on, to, um, moving on to Defenders. And Defenders, there's only two types. The first type is a normal tank. Um, you know, defenders are tanks in this game. So the first type is your normal tank, and the second type is healing tanks. So normal tanks, you can tell that very easily by their trait. It says block three enemies. Wait, wait, wait. What, what do healing tanks say? Yes, can heal allies using, using the skill. That's what healing tanks say. So normal tanks, you'll see that they can block three enemies. And the advantage of a normal tank is that they typically have higher stats um, higher defensive stats than a healing tank and they also usually have a defensive based skill as you can see Korra basically she increases her own defense and she also heals herself um, if you take a look at Matterhorn he increases his own max HP and defense and resistance and if you take a look at um, Croissant she can also increase her own defense if you take a look at Liskarm you know she can increase her own defense you, you kind of get the idea um, and the way that normal tanks are used, you know, they basically later on in the game when the big heavy units come out that do a lot of damage, you want to put down your, your tanks to be able to soak up that damage. And they're, um, the main thing that makes them strong is their defensive skills, which makes them even tankier. Like in emergency situations, you know, you used Korra's second skill, she becomes like super, super tanky and um, can block a, a whole bunch of damage which is really, really useful in a lot of situations. Um, def their defensive skills are kind of what, you know, th the real thing that like makes or breaks a tank, um, plus the fact that they can also block through units at once. The healing tanks, on the other hand, um, are also, I think healing tanks are also very, very OP. They basically, what they do is that their skills usually can heal themselves or heal allies and there's multiple uses for healing tanks. In certain situation, situations, you can put them out by themselves without a healer. 
and they can kind of like solo a lane or something like that. Um, it's very, very rare. I think there's, I think there's only like one or two stages where you could use that. You could do that, but it's not even necessary. Um, the other use of healing tanks is they're also interchangeable with normal tanks. So for the most part, unless you're taking like extremely, extremely um, high damage, then where it, to the point where you have to have a the tank's defensive cooldown, like defensive skill, in order to survive. Um, if any any case besides that, you will be able to switch out your your healing tank, your normal tank for a healing tank, and it would basically be interchangeable. So. Um, that's kind of the thing with healing tanks. They can also serve as a secondary healer as well. There's a lot of uses for healing tanks. Alright, so moving on to supporters. Um, there's three main types of supporters. Uh, we're only briefly going to talk about them. In terms of clearing through all the content in the game, I actually raised Earth Spirit, but I never had to use her. I, never, I think I used her in one challenge mode stage, and that was it. And on that stage, I actually didn't even need her. I could have just used another mage instead. It would have done the same thing. So um, you don't necessarily need to have any of the supporters to help you clear all the stages in the game. Um, if you want to raise them, if any of them is your waifu, they're definitely very fun to play with, especially the summoners. I haven't tried them out yet, but I know a lot of people that like... Um, play around with mayor and do like mayor solo solo clears so they're definitely not like useless and like by any means but in terms of like are they required are they necessary to clear through all the content in the game um, the answer is no again as you can see over here I did not raise them um, with the exception of earth spirit of course and having one slow support like at, at the very very least is very nice to have so I do, I do recommend having one on the side um, do they need to be like max level or on the same level as all your other units no they, they actually don't so the first type is you know slow supports basically you can tell them apart by by their uh, traits they slow and they oh I didn't max their skills yet I'm, I'm out of books that's unfortunate so they're used to kind of slow down the enemy is pretty straightforward slow supports slow the enemy um so that's like earth spirit orchid um estina angelina you know those are slow supports and for the second type of supports are buff and debuff supports so um, supports that buff and, and do debuffs to the enemy um, like buff your allies or do debuffs to the enemy I would categorize them as buff debuff supports. So that's like Pramanix and Sora. Um, I don't have Sora on this account, but basically they make your allies stronger and make the enemies weaker. And the third type of supports are summoners. They can summon these like cool creatures. Uh, Mirror can summon these like mechanical dogs. And then um, Deep Color can summon these tentacles and they look very fun to play with, but I actually don't have any experience using them. And, you know, if you want to raise them for, for fun, definitely definitely do that. I think you'll have, you'll have quite a lot of fun playing around with them. Um, the specialists are like kind of a rare case. There's ma three main types of specialists and a whole bunch of exceptions. Okay, so I'm only going to be talking about the three main types of specialists. Um, the first type is push. And that's basically just Shaw and F Eater. Um, they can push enemies forward, and you can use them use that to like push them through blocks. You can push them into pits. You can push them away from like the exit when you're getting flooded. Um, you can push them into one of your other units as well. So there's there's a lot of a lot of uses for um, for push supports. And I use Shaw a lot. Like I use Shaw in a lot of the challenge mode clears um, on this account. So Shaw is definitely, definitely worth raising. The second type is pull supports. So that's basically just Rope and Cliff Art. Um, Rope's really easy to get. You can get her from Recruit. The same thing with Gravel as well. Like the supports are, or the specialists are very easy to get from Recruit. Um, and also the game gives you like 
cliff art for free if you log in for seven days. So pull supports, it's the opposite of push supports. You can pull them towards you. And for push and pull supports, you want to get their skills to um, to rank four so they can push medium sized units and not just the very small light units. Um, you want to get both their skills to rank four. And for rope, I use her, I think in like one stage. No, I don't think I use her in any of the challenge mode clears. I could be wrong. I, I might just like not be remembering correctly, but I think I only use her in like Annihilation, um, one of the like two of the side story stages, and like one of the chip farming stages. I think. So she has a little bit more limited use than Shaw, but you still have to raise her to like do those stages anyways. So it's I mean you know you can use Cliff Heart as well. She does the same thing. It just depends on. Depends on who you like more. And because this is a four star um, account, I decided to use four stars instead. The third type of like main supports is um, fast redeploy, and that's Gravel and Project Red. And the thing that makes them special is you after their you can see their redeployment time is is fast, which means that after you retreat them, you can put them down again very, very quickly. And there's a lot of practical uses for, for gravel. In 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 um in challenge mode, you 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 see in the um the event challenge mode my last video on the second stage I also use gravel as well to stall the boss. The main way I use gravel is most of the time to suicide. Uh, she is just like you know the mages that like bind your your units. I usually put gravel out to get binded by them, and then I um I would retreat her, or I would send her out to get like exploded on by spiders um yeah she's basically just used as a sacrificial lamb like she's just she has been she has been very she has, like she's been she's been abused like crazy by me so it's it's pretty sad it's pretty sad i have i've abused gravel so 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 damn hard um <laughs> But anyways, that kind of concludes all the all the roles in the game, every single one. So in conclusion, what you want to raise, and if you want to clear all the content in the game, um, I basically set up my first and second squad to basically be all the units that you want to raise in the game. So uh, the first is your two two block vanguards. So in my case, it's courier and scavenger, two single target snipers, two single target healers, two normal tanks. One single target caster, one AoE caster, one one block guard, one AoE sniper, and then on the side you want to raise one um, one one block vanguard, one AoE healer, one two block range two block guard, one healing tank, and then your specialists and your slow support. Right. So if you have like basically a team of like these types of units every single one of these categories one every single one of these types then you can clear a hundred percent of the game um if you have just up to here like just these 15 so up to frost leaf actually you don't even need a healing tank and frost leaf. I, I didn't need them to clear clear story mode so if you just have these like these 12 um 12 units alongside um a a one block Vanguard and an AoE healer, then you'll be able to clear all of all of story mode, all the farming stages, like the chip farming stages, um, annihilation, just all the normal content in the game. Essentially, you'll be able to do it with just these fourteen. Um, and the reason why you want to raise fourteen and not just twelve at a time is because the stages are all different. So sometimes you you need to change out, switch out one or two units. But this main team, like this, something like this is what I would bring into a stage if I'm just going in blind, right? If I don't know, if I never tried the stage and I'm just going in blind, um, this is typically what I would use. And for 90% of all the all the stages, like a team like this is what I use, essentially. So kind of because you know the um, the way that like you know the, the various categories of units in the game. Um, you basically will know which ones to kind of swap out for. 
So for example, if you see someone in their clear video using Siege, you'll know that she's a two block Vanguard and you'll know that you can, in order to replace Siege because you don't have her or you didn't raise her, um, you can use your own two block Vanguard and not use your one block Vanguard, for example, right? Because they're not interchangeable. So if they fit the same role, they're, they're gonna be interchangeable. And I can say this for all of the content in the game because I do the exact same thing on my main account and also on, on this account as well. Um, I kind of have like the perspective of, of both sides, especially because I'm playing this account like seriously. So I guess to give you an example, I could also show my show my main account as well. So this is um, this, this here is my main account. It's this is basically actually wait, 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 over here. I'm still putting together together my dream team. I'm missing a few um, few units. I'm missing Aofala and Blue Poison right now. Actually, I'm only missing Aofala and Blue Poison. Once I have those two, then um, my dream team will be complete. And this is basically the exact same lineup as you saw from before. Um, the only thing I kind of switched around is the single target healer with an AoE healer on the main team. Because in later content, especially when your units are like already E2, um, there's less use of having two healer, two single target healers. And there's more use of, you know, if there's a case of everybody's taking too much damage or in, or in the poison stage or something like that, um, having an AoE healer instead of using two single target healers. So this is like something I would bring in blind to a stage. I think for now I'm, I'm actually using a Mia as my mage. And my other, other range unit, I'm actually using Cruz like this. And I, br I usually bring Suvarash because he's pretty OP, but I think if I'm going in blind like that, then I could also be, you know, using Shirayuki like this instead. And this would basically mirror the, um, well, if I switched out this healer and use this one, basically something like this would mirror um, what I have on my, my other account as well. It the, the two would basically mirror each other, right? Well, they're not in the same slots, but you get the idea, right? You get the idea. And I also mentioned like tanks are interchangeable. I mean, if you don't want to use a healing tank, then you can also use a, a normal tank as well. So like, depending on which units you have, you can kind of swap them out, you know? And if you are missing a certain role, for example, like for me, I am just, I don't have another sniper that I want to seriously raise. So I use a three star to fill their place. Like it's perfectly fine to do that. You can just use a three star that you, to, to fill the place of a role that you're missing, right? And basically wait on it. And the reason why I'm not using a four star is because I don't plan to use that four star for the long term on this account. So using the three star in this case is actually more beneficial. Um, the other thing I also need to clarify is like Indra's not actually a one a normal one block um, Normal one block guard Like she doesn't have the strengths of like a normal one block guard She actually the only reason I use her is because she doesn't have the <laughs> typical weakness of a fast attacking um, Two block guard like Indra's is OP. All right, so this is like an exception like uh, d don't don't look at don't look at Indra and just think like okay uh, I can use like Bee Hunter instead of Melantha or something like that. Uh, Indra's like an exception because Indra can ignore armor and also deal art arse damage if I need her to, and also life steal at the same time. So she's uh she's just she's just really really broken, um, which is which is why I I I put her there. Um, but besides that, it's basically the, the same concept, right, on on using your, your team, right? So um, in the future, if you need any help, I included a, um, a screenshot of the tier list, or not a tier list, it's a, a category list. I use the tier list maker to make a category list of all of the um, characters currently in the game right now. I think it's missing like the new ones that was released in the last banner, like Scotty and Bee Hunter. But you know, 
with me explaining, I think you pretty much get the point. Um, in the future, if you see someone else's video or clear video and you want to know, you know, what what units I can replace them with, basically, if they're in the same category, they're going to be interchangeable. So if you see someone using Siege, you can use Courier. If you see someone using Exusia, you can use um, um, Meteor. If you, if you, or, or Cruise, you know, if you see someone using like Shining, you can use Gaviel. If you see someone using like Hoshiguma, you can use Korra, right? If you see someone using Eofala, you can use Amiya. If you see someone using um, like, I don't know, Skyfire, you can use Jitano. Right, so basically all the roles, if they f are in the same roles, they're going to be interchangeable. And I think that's also what makes this game so uh, so FTP friendly, because you can you can use a lot of the 4-star units. And I actually have a lot more fun using the 4-star units on this account. Um, the... the uh, it, it, it's kind of weird because on my main account I feel like I'm pigeonholed into like using specific things but actually on this account I feel like I have more freedom so it's 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 really really strange but anyways that is pretty much it um, for this video um, I mentioned before that I have cleared through all the challenge mode stages and I actually have all the footage of all all my challenge mode clears which is something that I'm going to be uploading um, similar to like the last video I uploaded like a commentary and also showing the clears this way you can kind of get you know what I was thinking when I put down a certain unit um, and help you basically learn to think for yourself in the future instead of just copying somebody else right um, and I think the next the next video that I'm going to be making is a research based um, video si similar to the one that I made for the granny event and it's going to be for chapter 5 so it's basically going to be a whole bunch of spoilers um, of the not the story but like the stages and kind of to give you an idea of like basically every single unit you would need to to clear through that because I think for especially with me playing on this account I, I think for like um, free to play players there's a lot of um, limitations like there's th there's a lot of limited resources that you have so if you just go off like raising whatever when the new stages come out you might not have the units to be able to clear it so because I've gone through and looked at every single one of the stages of the of, um, of chapter 5 I think I'm going to be making that my next video so it will sim be similar to this one but I'll be telling you basically every single unit you would need to every single category of units you would need to have in order to be prepared when chapter 5 comes out which will be coming out very very soon but anyways in order to get that video make sure you subscribe make sure you um you don't have to hit the bell actually it's not not really urgent but you know make sure make sure you subscribe at, at the very least so you'll be able to um, get the next video once it comes out anyways i'll see you in the next one take care